In addition to that, we'll have sold some of our assets into... Are the right honourable Winston Peters? Mr Speaker, if you look at the uh, recent report from the IMF, they say that a continuation of the dollar at the current levels means New Zealand already high debt will continue to accumulate at an unsustainable rate. And it also says the Kiwi could be overvalued by as much as 20%. Mr Speaker, very shortly this government will bring into the House another shonky document of the type we saw last year in May, you recall, where they're going to create 170,000 new jobs in four years. That's right. Well, he didn't say it was going to be in Australia. He said in New Zealand. Mind you, that was the pre-election budget of last year, and there was an election coming, and here comes the gloom post-election for the budget in 2012. We're a trading nation. We live or die by our exports, and right there's the IMF telling that minister that he doesn't know what he's doing with an export-led economy or a country that's dependent upon exports. It runs economic policies that hammer our exporters, encourage the importers, and hands the, last, and hands the last of our thriving enterprises over to foreigners. This is supposed to be a government for the people of New Zealand. Instead, it is a government for foreign interests, for currency traders and overseas-owned banks. And the National Party, I cannot say they haven't got courage or that they're scared, but they don't have to use that classic old phrase, the fortitude, to do what is right by their own country and the mass majority of their own supporters because, despite the fact that they claim to be a mass membership party, they are concerned about the few and the very few, or as a famous American president, Roosevelt, once said, these over-mighty subjects. And for 20 years plus, we've had this economy being run for those sorts of people, and the signs of what's to come are already in the Prime Minister's predilection to say that this will be a zero increase budget. It's reached the stage where, even tonight, we have one of the, perhaps the greatest industry we've ever got, Fonterra, being opened up for a raid by outsiders, and some insiders, and some people awfully close to the National Party. Not because they believe in their ideas or their philosophy, but because they're the conduit or the elevator for them to massively increase their private wealth whilst they dupe the National Party into thinking this is good for the country. That was what the last debate was about on the dairy industry. It's supposed to be a farmer's government, but it's really a government of Wall Street traders and dairy interests, even those controlled by the communist state of China. But that's no surprise, of course, because former National Party apparatchiks and operatives and even Prime Ministers now work for those companies that are controlled by the Communist government of China. How low can you go? That's what this debate should be about tonight, and we are going to make sure that New Zealanders become more and more aware of how it is they thought they could trust a Prime Minister, and a Minister of Finance who was opposed by him, of course, but a Prime Minister, because of all things, he came from Wall Street. Doesn't anybody understand what happened at Wall Street in the last 28 years? Where they ripped apart the ownership and confidence of business after business in their country and elsewhere. Where banks, for example, no longer lent money. They lent a mortgage, then had that mortgage flogged off so that the payment of that mortgage was the last thing the banks were concerned about. With all these financial instruments, and this is what this government intends to do again in New Zealand in this budget coming up in 2012. Thousands of jobs have been lost since the Finance Minister boasted that 170,000 new jobs were being created over the next four years. Thousands at record levels heading across the Tasman so that the Minister of Employment for New Zealand now is a man called Swan, who's the Finance Minister in Australia. If you ask people who have gone to Australia, they invariably say that the government there looks after people. This government cares nothing for people. They are only for the few and the very few and the rich in, in, in particular. 
They pretend to care, but it's all form and no substance. And the finance minister does things, for example, like fobbing off the Nari party. Um, I'll pull Extension of time. Paul, Paul Goldsmith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'm very pleased to be